those don't need to because normally these the people who rob they can, they don't go out you know during the day and then attack people mm. you know but this is going to be at night they night have time. to be strategic you know night and patrol. the most effective way they can cope this mm. they have to use bait they, 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 what they're investing on is the problem not the actual internet mm. and that's what, it, what that's what we are trying to solve you know so we want a large if you cannot afford 4G data you should be able to afford what we provide to use internet for the whole day. Mm. All right, welcome once again to another amazing session of Pure Talk. You know, um, today I have Sigu with me, you know, Sigu has a, a big surprise for us. <laughs> you know, I'll call it a, um, a success story. Yeah, you yeah, know, absolutely. Yeah, so, yeah, I know it's been a while and since last, we last dropped a video. We apologize for that. You know, you know, so many things been happening. People are busy, we're working and um, some people traveled and I stuff. Know. Yeah, <laughs> but we back again in session. And, um, but you know what, we'll be right back right after this. Didi's Fashion Plus brings you the very best of outfits in town. At Didi's Fashion Plus, we sell different types of outfits ranging from shoes, school bags, designer bags, abayas, watches, trousers, and many more. At Didi's Fashion Plus, we cater for both male and female, young and old. Our outfits comes from the United States of America, Dubai, and Turkey. You want to beautify yourself? Don't wait to be told because Didi's Fashion Plus got you covered. Our shop is located at Fajikunda after the St. Charles Church on the Birkama Highway. For quality and affordable outfits, visit Didi's Fashion Plus today. For more information, you can contact us on 2924190 or 3804382. Beautify yourself with quality outfits from Didi's Fashion Plus. All right, welcome back. You know, this is Beer Talk. And I have sick with me. What's going on, bro? Not much, man. Man, it's no, been a while, bro. I know, I know. COVID, you know, Ramadan and everything man she have been busy so <laughs> i know ramadan yes. is over i know the mani kundas I know. the sanis <laughs> well you know the you know, are happy now yeah, yeah it's easy for us man ramadan is just i know, you know it's a normal thing for the manis and the nyanchos you know the man they can follow nyancho now the kumbalum fintale i know right <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. and, and full old boy oh my god no full boys old boy mm -hmm. Thank you, Bapa way, Bapa. <laughs> no, Ibrahim, man. Ibrahim, Ramadan is Ibrahim's problem. Oh, my God. Ibrahim, I'm going to work on you. When you go in the you know, Mahalong Ning, Nindladu, they got Ramadan at different times. Time, yeah. Never got a move like all at all. You know, so no task you gotta no yeah. move back. To. I remember around 2012. Oh, when I lived in Linwood, man. Ibrahim would <laughs> complain about Ramadan. Man, Ramadan is not easy here, honestly. The, it's not the time easy. is, you know. So, time like yeah. almost 10 o'clock. Nine o'clock, yeah. yeah man, 18 wow. hours. It's, it's, you fast until you're like, oh my god, okay. When is when is breakfast? <laughs> yeah, I know. Sure. Yeah, so. It's crazy. And now my other friend, um, uh, um, uh, Mustafa, Mustafa Jalo. It's oh, crazy. Okay. That dude, yeah. man, I'll come on, I'll come on. Boy. Man, it's my own money, you know what? Call my friend. Well, you are here, but. Shout out to him, man. Shout out to Bapa, too. Yeah. You know, we was there like last weekend at uh, oh, Eugene. Okay. We went to Eugene oh, last really? weekend. Okay, yeah. okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. his wife had That's a baby, cool. so um, we went to see the baby. Oh, nice, nice. Yeah, you know, nice he, he kind of, you know... Um, it's a baby girl, right? It's a baby girl, okay. yeah. Okay. He, you know, organized a little barbecue for us. So, you oh, know, wow. Yeah, Next we, time, man, you get there. your... You should get Absolutely, it's <laughs> super fun, man. It <laughs> was least, super fun. I can get away a little bit. Yeah, whenever yeah. we go, he's super fun out there, man. Mm -hmm. He make mm -hmm. you eat like crazy. After coming from there, like, <laughs> you kind of suffer from food coma. Oh, my that God. That dude, man. Him. Yeah, it was shout out to you, man. Shout out to the Queen, you know, Kumba and Baby Khadija Rahim. Shout out to you, boy. All right, man, let's get into it, bro. Absolutely, man. Let's All go right. For it. Hey, man, <clears throat> you know, I, I'm, I'm gonna um, digress a little bit. You know, mm -hmm. it's gonna be a tangent, you know, I know it's gonna be a tangent, but um, okay. we it's something that I feel like is necessary, you know, maybe yeah, we need to talk about it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a, it's a growing um 
concern right now, you know, happening in our country, in Gambia. You know, a lot of people are dying. A lot of people, you know, because of robbery, killing people, you know, and robbing people and all those atrocities that are happening out there. You know, it's hot aching. It's really crazy. You know, you think about it, you know, we growing up, we didn't know that. Absolutely. You know, Absolutely. I'm, I'm not going to say it's, it doesn't used to happen, but, you know, it's not like this. <laughs> you know, you barely hear such a thing happening. People robbing Yeah, people, yeah. In those you know, days, man. Like, it's, 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 yeah, you know, and it's, it's, it's a concern. So, I don't want to put you on the spot, but uh, hey, no. as a as a person, as a security agent or a security, you have a background in security. Mm -hmm. You know, what do you think is is lacking? What other a security security apparatus that we have slagging or what do you think what's your take on that because because i know um people a lot of people are saying oh when for the former president was there mm -hmm. things were different you know mm -hmm. what i mean and I, I, you know it's not far from the truth but mm -hmm. the thing is we still have the same security services out there yeah pretty much you know, you know what i mean and yeah. uh this is it's not about this is not about politics this is about your country this is about you <laughs> me your future your kids no, absolutely, absolutely you know what i mean so everybody's one person's security should concern everybody <laughs> no matter what you shouldn't be partisan <laughs> you know um issue so what's your take on that what do you think i think um is is i i have seen a lot of different you know perspectives you know i had a lot of you know news a lot of people talking about it but my my perspective on that is that you know any society that you go things will change with time you know what i'm saying you know when we are young you were like this but now you know somebody who doesn't know you for six seven or ten fifteen years when they see you today they, they're gonna be surprised oh my god this is a lot yeah you know what i'm saying so what i think what is happening to gambia if you look at gambia you know 20 25 years ago our population is not <laughs> up to 2.4 million mm. you know what i'm saying so these are all the effects of population is growing you know what i'm saying you go to gambia you know almost 54 percent of our you uh, our population is between is below the age of 25 54 percent you know so that That's is that is interesting mm. if you have a 54 percent population that is between uh, below the age of 25 and then 90 percent of those people are not employed you know what I'm saying? Mm. You know, oh, let's 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 push it up a little bit. Let's say, I would say, seventy percent of population is be below the age of fifty. If eighty percent of that is not pop, is not you know, it's not employed. What are they going to be doing? So this, I think, the, our kids are not engaged. You know, their their mind is is the devil's you know playground. You know what I'm saying? Mm. I think that is one of the factors. But when you come to um, in terms of security and what the security apparatus can do, I think um, there is one thing that is very common in the Gambia: we we are always reactive. You know what I'm saying? We don't sit and analyze things and anticipate when this happened, this could happen. Mm -hmm. You know, who are the people who are you know architecting those kind of you know mentality to say you know what? This is what we need to do because based on what we are seeing, this is what we need to do. To educate the people about crimes, you know, and educate the citizen, the citizenry, you know, in terms of, you know, how to take care of themselves, you know, what to do, what not to do, you know. I think something similar is happening when Yajame was there, mm. but again, you know, right now Gambia, if something happened that right now you can hear it today, you know, in the next minute. But before when Yajame was there, he suppressed information as mm. well. People were dying there too. I'm not saying it's the same magnitude, but again, we have TRC going on. Mm -hmm. You know, so a lot of people mm -hmm. die even though when Yajame was there. Mm -hmm. You know, so it is really interesting. But I think um, security departments, you know, the police and the other people, they need to be more proactive than mm -hmm. reactive. You don't have to wait until somebody dies, then you start to patrol. Thieves, thieves and criminals are not stupid. <laughs> They're mm -hmm. gonna lay low. You guys are going to patrol until you say, okay, it's clean now, and then they come out. They strike and then go. It's just like bank robbery. You know, these are people who are like, you know, I'm not saying they're professionals. You know, it could be somebody who has military backgrounds, who has like, you know, police backgrounds, you know, and something like that. But it has to be somebody who knows how to use weapons and how to use intimidation tactics, you know, to go, to go after people. They know mm. people are scared now. You know, they, they have specific targets, you know, because Gambia doesn't have any... 911 system 
you know, even you are in the middle of Banjul, if somebody attack you, you are the mercy of the people, mm -hmm. the, the, the person who attack you. You know, so I think proactiveness is one one part of it. You know, but um, the second part of it would be to educate people. Do not, because when population grow, it's not like you and me. We used to grow together. Everybody know each other. Mm. You know, everybody used to eat fine. But now, pe pe even in Gambia, people's, you know, people who are not even then are wealthy. They, they, what they want to wear and what they want to, you know, their, their, their general life condition. They, 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 they want to put it somewhere that is, it's not it's even close. You know what I'm saying? Means. So mm. population is pushing Gambia to the edge. You know what I'm saying? I think that's part of, you know, the issue. You know, the third one would be, you know, the government need to invest in security. <laughs> it's, 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 it's common sense. It's yeah. They need to invest in security. Yeah. Gambia is not big. We, we are thinking like this is a massive country. No. Mm -mm. You pass Brikama, there's nobody. You pass Bara, there's no one there. I keep mm -hmm. saying this. Mm -hmm. You pass Brufud, there's no one in Tanje and all of those places. You go to Gunyuri, you'll be surprised. You know what I'm saying? Right. So, do you want to tell me 100 CCTV cameras will not cover the places? It's impossible. No, it's not even up to 100. Banjul, all the highways, put CCTV cameras there. It's not 100 million. But I think, you know, government, not to politicize this, but again, you know, people need to be willing to, you know, their intention should be to better the lives of Gambians. Don't pretend. When something happens, you go and patrol. <laughs> it's not going to benefit anybody. Mm. And criminals are going to lay low. When they lay low, Guess what? Two, three months later, bam, they strike again. And I think that's what is happening. The, uh, the um, immigration station, I think it's in Tangier or somewhere. Yeah. And now that the, the, the $16 million DLC robbery in um, in the middle of the jam, I think it's Canifin or one of those. Just one? Yeah, just one. You know, so I think the government have to be serious about it. Don't just react when people say, whoa, security, security, but they have to be proactive. Mm. You know, meaning genuinely the police and the you know security apparatus, they they want to save God, life and property in Gambia. They should have that in in their intention. Absolutely. Because intention is everything. If you don't have that, you're just gonna pretend. Yeah. And I I feel like that is what is happening. You know what I'm saying? I mean, like you know, I said so in the beginning, it's about it's about the country. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. And there's a lot of police <laughs> police officers in Gambia. But the other thing is, police officers in Gambia don't they don't carry guns. That's I another think, thing because I think um, yeah. I, if you look at Gambia still, our our security situation is not up to like the U.S. Mm. <laughs> it's not even close. You know, here people can arm themselves. Here, this country has 400 million guns stuck living around in the, the entire country. So I don't think um, daily security activities, especially during the day, those don't need to because normally these the people who rob they can, they don't go out, you know, during the day and then attack people. Mm. You know, but this is going to be at night. They night have time. to be strategic, you know. And the most effective way they can cope this, mm. they have to use bait. Even I see people complaining. So I remember I went back to Gambia 2018. Mm. My brother was complaining that my my compound there was there was thieves around there. And then you know that entire time I was there, when I'm there in the house, I would open the door. You know, strategically go sneak somewhere else where I can see my door and everything, <laughs> be in the neighborhood, and then see if somebody will come and try to, you know, because again, okay, okay. these are thieves. They will yeah. watch you, they think you're gone, and then yeah. do bait. You know, put $100,000 here, go around. Then you know the thieves in the, in the, in the, in the, in the neighborhood. neighborhood. Mm. You know, put a phone here, yeah, go around. That's a little bit of too much, bro. Huh? <laughs> that's a little bit too much, 100000 <laughs> Well, let's put an iPhone here. Yeah, just, yeah. Police need to, you know, I think that that is the best way. If you look at the, the areas in America where they have this lot of these petty, petty crimes, mm. they do bait. You know, car, they if there's, they, is, they if there's yeah. Yeah, yeah, they do If that. there's a car, car, car jacking pro, car car yeah. problem in this neighborhood, police will come, mm. a sting operation, put a bait here, and mm. then wait. Because if they put a bait here, mm. if somebody iPhone drop here, you are not a thief. You find it, you're gonna ask, hey, Jamala iPhone yeah. it's, it's common sense. You know, but somebody who's who has those kind of intentions and this kind of attitude, they will start to, you know, yeah. that way you're gonna weed out these criminals like no man's business. Yeah. If it's not yours, why do you take it? You change the attitude of you know the citizenry. You know, you force people to think, hey, you know what? What I'm doing, maybe this could be a bait. Somebody's watching me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I guarantee you, they start doing that, they'll hit on criminals like crazy. 
No doubt. It been these robberies. Pretend, see, get somebody who try to expose himself with cash and other things, and then police will be around in a they have a sting operation. Mm -hmm. You know, and then guess That's what? Like, if they see that you know Elijah is floating a lot of cash, guess mm -hmm. what? You're gonna be the next target. Absolutely. You know, sting operations. You would weed out these people. They're not the criminals. Are not intelligent. They make a lot of mistakes. Mm -hmm. You know. And the other thing is, you know, I always keep, keep saying, again, I don't know how they do investigations in, in Gambia, you know, but, you know, I, I did computer forensics, you know, um, I think um, part of computer forensics is, I'm not sure how, if they're using any kind of digital, you know, technological data to see, okay, let's say a crime happens here, there's a cell phone tower there. Yeah, that's going to try. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Mm -hmm. Anyone who is within that neighborhood, if you're in Africa or Gams or whatever, mm. they should collect data from all those people. Mm. See the phone numbers, you know, the phone numbers that, that were talking to that cell phone at the time. Right. You know, it's going to be a lot of work, but hey man, Boston Marathon, the guy mm -hmm. who, who did the Boston Marathon bombing, oh, yeah. that guy took the police, I think, less than 24 hours to find a suspect. Yeah. You know? So you, you know, they will see numbers that are frequently in that neighborhood. But they will see new numbers, let's say 100, 200. Why are you guys here at this time, mm. this old hours, this time? This is how you investigate crime. You know, you put people on the spot. Your phone number is here. What are you doing here? Right. But again, you know, there has to be a genuineness in in, mm. in people, whatever mm. you're trying to solve. Absolutely. I want to be a police officer. I want to safeguard property and life. Mm. You know, and I, 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 I don't see that. You know, so I think the government need to think that way otherwise it's going to be more reaction it's going to be politics you know in, instead of actually making sure the citizens are safe I see. you know i think that's uh, what is happening you know uh, because right now police are everywhere yeah, are stupid. Yeah, you know, you know when it rains outside we go inside you know what i'm saying you know you wait until the rain stops and you go and do what you need to do you know it's common sense you know they they, they hit you know they get 16 million you think they're gonna go back tomorrow <laughs> no they're gonna probably use the money for like a month two three four you know and then wait again and then go and but they will make mistakes you know but i think um that way they need to they need to set up sting operations to force the youth to change their mind if you see something that doesn't belong to you mm. you shouldn't take it you know what i'm saying and and another another area would be you know people individual citizens you know not necessarily you arm yourself i, I think that is extreme at this point um, no, but it, I think I think it's necessary because the, the 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 one reason that people are afraid of the police is because they are. Uh, that's, well, I'm, know, saying the, I'm the, not the saying citizens, to shoot at anybody. The citizen, yeah. Oh, the, the police, I'm the, no, the no, police no, no, I'm the citizens. Yes, no, yes. no, no, I'm not. Police that. night patrol, yeah. and when they respond to um, calls and other things, mm -hmm. they should, they should, yeah, they, they should, should have a gun absolutely, at least, absolutely. at least, like, yeah. come on, police. Come yeah. <laughs> but I don't but, know how it is right now, though. Citizens, you know, I think. That is subjective. Even here in the US, yeah. you know, studies have shown people who arm themselves, and if you have your weapon, simple issues, you escalate it. You escalate no, uh, <laughs> it. You know yeah, uh, yeah. No, I'm not so, talking about it. I don't want exactly. to go to those streets. But I think yeah. what people can do, you know, right now people are scared, and I've been talking with a lot of people on the ground, yeah. you know, and part of our, we are trying to bring something that hopefully that, that can help in that sector. Mm. People need to start to think outside of the box, you know. Put cameras, invest in cameras. Camera systems. No, that's very important. You, know? you touch on that. You said, yeah. At least we should have CCTVs or surveillance. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. Government need come. to invest. Let's say yeah. right now, invest hundred cameras, yeah. hundred CCTV. You know where they have they, they have that internet and they can they can they can record the data mm -hmm. back to a data center or whatever. You know the, those are you don't you don't want to. So another mistake that, that that I see a lot even in the game here, people go and buy these CCTVs that you know you just put here and the recorder is right there. Thieves they know if they know there's a CCTV, they're looking for the recorder. They're gonna take the recorder and now you don't have any data. The CCTV is useless. But now technology has improved. Mm. The CCTVs you know most of the um, um, normally, Gambia they call it CCTV, but so, these surveillance cameras they have here, most of them are wireless. So the recorder is not local, it's remote mm -hmm. in the data center or in the cloud. So whatever they, they record is in the it's cloud. In there, yeah. My home is the same thing. Mm -hmm. You know, you walk in, I see you. Yeah. Too late. You can take the camera, but your recording is still there. Mm -hmm. So I think this is where individual citizens need to start to invest in, you know, motion cameras. If somebody, exactly. my house right now, 
you pass up my door, mm. there's a motion, say, so there's a motion detector. Mm. And I will look at him like, oh, who, who is this? You and I can engage you. Yeah, I can talk to you, yeah. two-way camera. I'm like, hey, what are you doing here? You know, yeah. then you know in real time that somebody's there. But if a camera records something, you know, the people hide their face and stuff like that, you know, how would you know somebody's there? Take that? And so we, we are trying to bring something also that would um, solve that problem too. Absolutely. People can invest into motion cameras, mm -hmm. you know, and then record it and then put them in the cloud. You know, just, I mean, safety is, is paramount. I mean, safety it's is number key. one, bro. You know, your family and it's yourself is, is key. But I know government people are scared, yeah. you know, but I think what I, what I would tell them, people need to, you know, stick together, you know community is bigger than one person mm. you know do not hide criminals mm -hmm. it's not gonna help you it doesn't matter if they are brother your sisters or whatever if you have information and I know somebody has information about this absolutely thing, you know reach out to the police <laughs> you know, just that's, that's how you know citizens you know you have to protect each other you know you need to be patriotic be yeah. a patriot and then protect your own citizens you know your fellow citizens that, that kind of thing man I would yeah. ride to the car man I, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I don't care because like it's, it's, it's crazy you know every day you see these pictures you see videos you know people it's it's absolutely you know, frightening it's, it's, you know, it is. it's frightening it's, people it's, are scared concern, to death you know you know and I think um yeah, we all have families out there. We all have, yeah, you know, yeah, I mean, Gambia, yeah. we all family. I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to hey, see myself, anybody. If I go there, in he, my brother, man, he told me, hey, yeah. don't be out till eleven o'clock. And I'm like, to me, coming from Gambia a couple of years ago, ten, yeah, eleven years ago, I'm like, yeah, oh, it's, this is Gambia, man. Yeah. Gambia, no problem. But yeah. Gambia, what a problem now. No problem. You know, you know that, that is that doesn't sure. used to be a thing in Gambia. Um, I think the government need to government. So everyone need to play their part. We're all stakeholders mm -hmm, in this. Mm -hmm. The government need to do CCTVs for the government data. Mm. You know, then they will see if somebody say, "Oh, they use a, a black car," and they can track those they can around. Track those every you black know, because um, at some point they will have to cross. You know, because they're criminals, man. It's all good. Bro. It's it, all man. good, Thank man. Much, Shoot. Man. Mr. Atayaman ah, is man, This is why Piatok is always nice while, to be a Piatok man. This. Yeah, Piatok, <laughs> this is what I miss. <laughs> so you know what I'm saying? The government yeah. has a role to play. No doubt. You know, so because we had you make on the boat. If you, mm -hmm. if you look, look at it, you know, uh, Gambia, we always say, you know, tourism is our second highest, you know, um, GDP, whatever. Correct. So, um, security is important because if the tourists are hearing these kind of things, not even yeah one of my man, friends is trying to go to Gambia like yeah. as recently as yeah. we were talking yesterday and he is telling me man I know how am I gonna protect myself there yeah you know it's, it's getting very interesting you know yeah. so not even tourists even Gambian semesters I know they don't absolutely. count Gambian semesters as tourists <laughs> but if you look at the numbers <laughs> they, are tourists. they are the real tourists yeah, absolutely because what Gambian semesters mm -hmm. spend in Gambia I don't mm -hmm. think tourists do nah. tourists will come you know I used to remember from the, the UK and they have this mm -hmm. two-week package for like 1,000 pounds or something nice. yeah but most of the gambian semesters they spend three four thousand dollars five thousand dollars just you know, one yeah. trip, like for so like three <laughs> absolutely three one, but yeah you know so i think um the government yeah. have a responsibility to make everybody safe mm -hmm. but people also have the responsibility to protect themselves yeah absolutely. You know, protect yourself you know, invest in, a, in security and yeah. other things and then do not hide criminals Criminal. yeah yeah that's what i'm about to so, say yeah. do not hide criminals you know we have to be vigilant in our neighborhoods yeah. you know um it's it's, it's but for the police yeah Sting operation. Sting you know, operation. This is yeah. what what makes America used to be around the nineteen seventies. Uh, mm. The seventies where drugs and there was so much problem yeah. in, the, in this country. If you look at history, you know even the movies that are in the seventies. But sting operation. Right. You know drug. There was so much war on drugs. There was mm -hmm. so much drug around everywhere. You know, undercover police. That's how undercover police come out. Yeah. But you don't go around with guns and everything and every oh, criminals. You're gonna be passing as like, oh, criminals are over there. Go go go. Yeah. He's the criminal. He's a cri you know, you know that you know? that guy, uh, Gorgin Boop. That uh, his name yeah. was around for a while. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. People, uh, a lot of people knock on him, him like saying, you know, he's doing he's doing too much. You know, mm -hmm. he um a lot of people he he been arresting people who are not even criminals. You know, criminals. You know, and torturing and stuff like that. I'm not I'm not about that. But you know. The strategy he was using, I heard. You know, at least that that's kind of similar to that you are seeing. He mm -hmm. he is working with people who are living in the street, like on, on the street kids, mm -hmm. he, who know the ghetto, who knows the, the bad guys. Mm -hmm. You know, he will work on, with them. You know, go with them on patrol, and that's why he was able to you know 
uh, apprehend a lot of, <laughs> a lot of these I think also like yeah. Tocho also is a big problem it's in Gambia. Big, yeah, it's a big problem. But I think um, the way they invest, investigate, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, it's crazy. Yeah, police professionalism is, again, like I say, intentions have to be genuine. Yeah. Yeah. If you want to be a police officer, mm. you, your goal is to, you know, improve the life of gambling. Absolutely. Safeguard, you know, life and property. Very simple. Mm -hmm. You know, that means if you cut anybody doing anything, you know, everybody, you know, every suspect is innocent until, until proven, proven guilty. guilty. Mm. So you cannot lay your hands on it. On somebody. So yeah, professionalism, <laughs> yeah. you know, I think the, the, all of those things are going to change the way people look at the police. Mm. If you arrest somebody professionally, nicely, you talk to them, and yeah. then, you know, again, like, when I go to Gambia, always, I feel like I, I've seen new things, you know, mm. this na nature of being aggressive, you yeah. know, in, even yeah. like, no, get, nah, man. I know, a police officer, you know, yeah. simple things, that, hey, you know, can you, no, don't go here, don't, but they will be so aggressive, you know, intonation is important, the way you sound, you know, somebody else is, is contagious, but you know what I'm saying? Growing up, uh, when I see a paramilitary, <laughs> I like said. I got phobic, like yo, like yeah. cause I know, like you know, back in the day, you know, mm -hmm. they used to like torture a lot of people, yeah. you know. So no, it yeah. becomes so people don't a thing trust that we, yeah, we don't trust, don't trust them. We scared of them. Yeah. If you see a paramilitary, like yo, it's crazy, you know. I um, think uh, training, training, and yeah. then proactiveness, you know, um, sting operations. Don't don't make a lot of noise. Yeah. There's no war or anything in Gambia right now. I know. You know, and the last thing we want to see things that are happening in Nigeria. You know, and human beings adapt. People learn. Mm -hmm. You know, they they watch these movies. They learn these things mm -hmm. from other places. Mm -hmm. You know, or other cultures, foreign cultures are going to bring these things into our our, our source. And mm -hmm. unfortunately, government has it. They have the job to to. To, to have technocrats that can look into these things and then while while trying to prevent them and then not you know infringing on the citizens mm. right and I think this is how you know you know advanced societies work Absolutely. if we want everybody to live in Gambia enjoy the peace and tranquility in Gambia hey police have to do their job they, they have, have to weed out people that's that are why not, they are police yeah absolutely yeah so but yeah. you know in order to do that I don't think like having all these operations, I don't think it's going to, personally, mm. I don't think it's going to change anything. You know, mm. because security is, is, a, is a mindset. Mm. You know, it's, it's a tactic. It's just like a chess game. You know, so think about it. If you are a criminal, what are you going to be thinking right now? Oh, there's patrol everywhere. Yeah. I'm not going out. Whatever I'm doing, I'm just going to lay low. You know, when there's no patrol, people think everything is calm. That's when you strike. It's very, very, it's very, it's, it's common sense. Mm. You know, when everything is calm, you strike. You strike and then yeah. panic. When there's panic, you, you lay low. You know, when you're not caught, you think, okay, I can do this again. Wow. But how do you catch something like that? Mm. Sting operation. Sting you know, operation, sting you know. Sting operation. Gambia is hey, too small. It's you know? crazy. We thought we, you know, we should, I know, digress on that and then talk a little bit about it because it's a growing concern. It's a concern Absolutely, for, you know, for um, us and, um, it's heartening to hear such stories happening because it happened to somebody else. You don't know who is oh, yeah. going to be the next. Who is the next team. person? Absolutely. Yeah, Absolutely. and then you know, as Gambians, you know, no matter what happened, come on, man. Mm -hmm. This thing shouldn't be, you know, something that's going to be news every day, you know, TVs or whatever, mm -hmm. news outlets. You know, Gambia is not a peace. When you talk about Gambia, you see smiling because of the no, African no. peace. Peace. Ever since we were young, we mm -hmm. shouldn't taste that because every country does. There's something that they have that they take <laughs> you have to pride cherish in. That, yeah. yeah. So we have to cherish it, no matter what happened. Like, let's let's live together mm -hmm. in one unity, man. Like you said, tourists. Yeah. Tourists don't go to Sierra Leone. Tourists yeah. they barely go to Nigeria. They're not, yeah. Because the name is yeah. You know, it's terrifying. Yeah. You know, Even you though it's not like that, the exactly. media, but like. But like Gambia, man, come on. Yeah. Image come is on. everything. Image it, is it, everything. The image of the country yeah. is Spanish. Yeah. You know, like look at our sister nations like Sierra Leone, mm -hmm. Nigeria. Even though these are nice countries, yeah. but the image the is image, worldwide yeah. is Spanish. It's Spanish. So, mm -hmm. you know, like I say, all of us are stakeholders in this. Yep. You know, you and I talking, Absolutely. we're stakeholders. Mm -hmm. You know, the media, people who cover these things, mm -hmm. they're stakeholders. Mm -hmm. You know, make sure you don't rush to judgments. You know what I'm saying? You know, verify your stories and then verify the, the real stories. Don't mm -hmm. just, you know, send something out and then put fear in the people. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. fear, fear is a very bad thing. It's a bad, know? yeah. It's yeah. a very bad thing. People are scared. They, they don't want to do, they don't want to do normal mm -hmm. life things 
you know, let's let's give police information, you know, let's help each other, let's not politicize this. Politicize. You know, because again, somebody is there today, I mean, you know, I'm not a borough supporter, I'm not a UDP, I'm not none of these political mm. parties, man. Because my me individually, I don't think politics is a solution to Gambia. Mm. You know, we it's gonna be the same circle, we're on a circle. You know, we are just on a different side of the circle. Yeah, um, we gotta change as a team. But anyone who is there, to be collective. Exactly. Be collective. Anyone who is there, let's politicians give them opportunity or not to support them. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, everybody, not. it should be a collective team. Though. Yeah. So yeah. let's let's support the government. Let's support the police, and then you know yeah. this will be a thing of the past. All right, man. Let's get into it. Say who? Ah, oh, man. The big thing is here. I know, right? The thing Final. that we've been talking about for quite a while now. Yeah, absolutely. Alhamdulillah, now. <laughs> yeah, thanks a lot, mm -hmm. Now everything is up and running. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. absolutely. Um, uh, what is the name again? Connect, Con Connect Five. Connect Five. Mm -hmm. Connect Five. Connect Five. I've been saying it for so long. I don't know why. <laughs> you know, I, I forgot know. about it, you know. I know. So, yeah, so, you know, in a, in a not so, yeah. for people who might not heard about it before. You know, can you can you uh, tell us the history behind that? Uh, yeah, Connect. Um, Connect Five started in back in 2018, mm -hmm. um, and I think from the previous episode, I visited the Gambia, and I needed to work in the Gambia at the same time. Mm. You know, because I don't have any vacation hours. Hired by a new company, um, and I need to work there. But unfortunately, you know, the cellular internet services that are there, like the 4G, 4G mm, data, mm. you know, those are not enough for me to be able to work. I struggled, you know. Um, so then I realized there's a gap in Gambia. Right. You know, there's a huge gap. Why is everybody, you know, all the um, stakeholders in the internet industry investing only into cell phone, you know, cellular data, 4G, 3G, you know. So I realized, you know, to a layman, you know, when you say internet, internet is internet, right? Mm -hmm. they, they don't understand that I thought that there's a gap, then I do my research, re do my research and then come back to the U.S. Then the following year, 2019, I went back, you know, do some feasibility studies, do some site surveys and then, you know, start the registration process and then came back to the U.S. again, 2019. In 2020, went back, you know, register the business, start the, the ground process and then uh, finally, 2021, we ship our equipment and everything and then we are... We're in operation right now. Now he's in operation. Wow. <laughs> it's operating now. Absolutely. Up and yeah. running. Yeah, absolutely. Wow. It's been a while, you know, but again, persistence, you know, hard work and consistency. Yeah. You can get there. You know, it's, it's by the way, easy. by the way, Connect Fire is a new internet service provider. You know, yeah. provider mm -hmm. and uh, it's unlimited, right? So right now, yes. We, so we so when you say unlimited, how because uh, you know unlimited in Africa and here is different. So when, right. <laughs> you get me. Talk yeah. to me about it. So I think um, when you say uh, unlimited. How yeah. it, how does that work? I in think Gambia? what I want to dissect is when you say internet in Gambia, mm. people again to a layman is just what is internet, you know, four G, five G, three G, six G, broadband, you know, fiber, you know, all of these things, wireless. What is what? People are confused, mm. you know. So let's assume internet is Banjul. Let's say Banjul is internet, right? To go to Banjul, you use the Banjul Highway, right? But right. the medium to go to Banjul would be, you can use a truck to go to Banjul. You can use a van to go to Banjul, right? You can use a, a private car to go to Banjul. You can use a taxi to go to Banjul. You can use a bus to go to Banjul. So all these different medium of transportation, they're just a medium to get to Banjul. So 4G, let's assume 4G is, you know, the bus. Mm. And then van is, you know, let's say broadband. You know what I'm saying? So the truck is satellite. So all of these are just a medium to get you to the internet. So but Gambia, they're investing on only one, that is let's say 4G. Afro cells, the Q cells, everybody's spending on 4G. They're just investing on 4G. Mm. We have 4G here in the US. But you use your 4G only when you go out of your house. Before you get to work. You get to work, there's Wi-Fi there. Mm. You get home, there's Wi-Fi there. So Wi-Fi is also, that's broadband internet, that's another medium to get you to the internet. Which is much cheaper you know to the consumer but 4g is expensive to the consumer but the stakeholders are investing into 4g because it's, it maximizes profit if you have 10 people living in a compound and then all of them are buying 4g data daily that's more profit to the to the, to the stakeholders mm -hmm. but not to the customer you're killing the customer because every bit they send across the wire they have to pay for it right so compared to like somebody can bring internet for 2500 and guess what? The whole house can use it. Mm -hmm. 
So this is the logic. You know, that's why the, the, the stakeholders refuse to invest into these other mediums of internet. Like I say, satellite, broadband, you know, fiber. All of these are quality mediums of internet, you know, um, delivery. But they will not do it. They just invest in 4G. And if you look at 4G, you know, that is, uh, is it's meant for mobile. It's cellular data. It's mostly for mobile. You can, I mean, at this, at this stage, you can use it for... Um, uh, laptops and other things but again even Gambia most of the 4G's are not 4G I'll tell you that you know you should do your research the 4G's <laughs> they are not 4G's not kidding the speed is not qualified to be called 4G most of them mm. you know because I we did a test in around a lot of game locations in Gambia you know almost 80 percent of the speed is not qualified to be called 4G you know and mm. again this is our selling point we have 4G 4G you have 4G <laughs> are you kidding me five megabits per second that is not 4G that is not 4G. And authorities, people who are regulating these days, need to tell them the truth. Hey, you don't have 4G. Don't advertise 4G. You know. But again, um, these terms are jumbled. Consumers are confused. Every people, all they care, they need internet to go to, to, to do their job. Mm -hmm. So what we are trying to solve, we, you know, our value proposition is to to deliver internet service to everybody is inclusive in Gambia. Because right now, if I want to do a meeting with my guys, we want to use a cellular data, a 4G data. Mm -hmm. We spend a thousand dollars a day because we're doing this Zoom call for like eight hours straight. We use a thousand dollars a day. Wow. You know that that is crazy. That is really expensive. Yeah. So what we are trying to do is, you know, if you don't have, we don't we don't want you to go break the bank, and then just to access internet. Because internet, right now in Gambia, because somebody was telling me. Sometimes even you are in the neighborhood, mm -hmm. you don't have cell phone data. There could be somebody could pass away, and then all of a sudden you get out of your house and you see people are going to the burial site. You're like what is happening? They say, oh, somebody passed away. Well, I did not hear about it. They say, well, we send it into the WhatsApp group. Mm. And I'm like, I'm like, whoa, wow, that is so interesting. Yeah. So internet is because becoming a necessity to, yeah. in the country, mm -hmm. but again, it's getting more expensive. Ten years ago, there were less internet users than today. But internet mm. is more expensive in the game today than 10 years ago. You know what I'm saying? Mm. But again, like I say, all of this is the medium of internet delivery is the problem. The way they, 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 they what they're investing on is the problem, not the actual internet. Mm. And that's what, it, what, that's what we are trying to solve. You know, so we want a large, if you cannot afford 4G data, you should be able to afford what we provide to use internet for the whole day. Mm. Like right now, if you go to Sukuta, we have a 600 square meter um, Wi-Fi zone in Sukuta. You know, 600 square meters. Wow. That's massive. That's right. Yeah. So anyone within that zone, they can go and buy a token for 25 dollars for 24 hours. That means one you're using less than one dollars per hour. You can access our internet. Right now, people are going crazy about it there. Mm, no you know. Doubt. You can browse. Zoom calls are super clear. WhatsApp calls are the people cannot even believe. So the the, the service is is is, uh, is fast. It's super fast. Ah. Super fast. It's way faster than whatever, <laughs> whatever what, they have. What, there. Whatever is available there. Yeah. So I was gonna ask you about that. How how did the people take it? Are people receptive to it? Because most of the time, yeah. you know, you know, um, you know, you know, you know, mm -hmm. communities. Mm -hmm. If something that is, if something. Like things like that is brought in, brought in by someone who is from the same neighborhood. Mm -hmm. People don't take it serious sometimes. They're yeah. like, "Oh, come on, man!" Like, because it's not white, right? <laughs> so uh, a white some, person you know, or somebody who has the light skin has absolutely, to, absolutely. yeah, has to involve in it mm -hmm. to be to to be able for, for the community to be able to validate, to embrace it. I think, yeah, and, I mean, and it's, it's it's the fact though. Like, it's, 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 I mean, yeah. it's, it's it a gambian, a, it's a gambian attitude. It, yeah. it has to be. It has to have a foreign connection yeah. in order for people to value it. I, yeah. I think I agree on that. But for um, I was born in Sukuta. I think right now people are taking it very 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 um Asha. they're accepting That's it very good. well yeah. because number one people are surprised you know the, the surprise part of it that's what we want mm. you know we, like when we go out and tell people hey we have internet and they were like okay what do you mean you have internet how are you guys gonna charge me we say 25 well what how how long is that and he's still in 24 but what the, what does that even mean and he said to tell them you can browse youtube you know you can do WhatsApp call every day. You can watch your status. Yeah. You can do this. You can do that. You can, and they were telling you, really? I can do that whole thing for 24 hours. <laughs> 24. And you tell them yes. And so how much you charge for 24 hours? 
25 dollars. 25 dollars? Yes. yes. Wow. So, right. again, you know, the genuineness to provide service to the community, mm -hmm. you know, because we know when at $25, we're not going to get a re return of our investment mm -hmm. right now, mm -hmm. you know, but we're trying to um, open different, different areas. Strategy. And then that way, yeah. you know, it's going to be a volume base. Mm -hmm. once, once we have the right volume, mm -hmm. we get, you know, we also get something out something of it. Out of that. But again, we're not going to mm -hmm. break people's back. Mm -hmm. So this is, you know, the mission we have. And then the area we're trying to solve. We believe if we had this in every city, you know, at least it's not going to solve the whole problem. But at least people have options. Mm -hmm. You know, when I was there in 2018, I could not use any of the cell cellular data to do what I need to do. I could have just I was asking people, hey, is there any Wi-Fi zone somewhere I can go sit? You're like, what is Wi-Fi zone? You crazy? Then I realized, okay, this is exactly what I need to do. Mm -hmm. So right now I go to Gambia. I can go and sit in my zone, 600 square meter zone, and then do quality, you know, Zoom calls, do this and this and this. I'm good to go. So how about the quality in homes, like private homes? So is it, yeah, a private homes, that is the other side of the business. Uh, did you start that yet? Uh, no. Not, not yet. yet. Okay, uh, okay. But that's part of the plan too. Yes, but this okay. one, okay. again, we, we don't want to deviate from our our mission mm -hmm. because again money money could be tempting yeah, what's you know because we have a lot of private customers coming hey i want in a, in my home mm. i'll pay you guys whatever the installation fee is and the monthly fee is you know but again man we are here for everybody not just for people who are wealthy but i think that's yeah. important too you know yeah. it's a because it's because like you said you know internet yeah. service in gambia is not all of that <laughs> you know mm. but you know, no. if people have it in their homes, I think yeah. that's something that absolutely you know, that you know, should look into. Yeah, th th that is the area that we want to invest more. more you know, yeah. anybody. Who I mean, you're gonna afford, have a lot of customers, man. Trust I mean, me, bro. You know, we, a lot of people gonna show up. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Now, yeah. people need internet. It's a necessity there at this yeah. point. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a necessity there, and then um, unfortunately, the stakeholders that they invest in a different direction. Mm. You know, but again, man, like I say. Um, if you see something that is not happening, <laughs> well, can you solve it? Go for it. You know, Gambians are very talented, they're very educated. Mm -hmm. You know, but one thing we lack behind is you know not going home and investing our skills in our you know own people. Very I think important. That is something that we, we need to start to do. Yeah, that's important you know? because like it could be having a long right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Balafab long. Yeah. So you you charging them for twenty five. Policies yeah. to get a whole twenty-four hours into yeah, the service. Yeah, yeah absolutely. You know, I mean, if you buy that for a credit, you oh, know what they is, sell over there. That's probably that's fifteen minutes of. Yeah, you cannot even. Call? You probably not. Yeah, what's up, call? Because fifteen minutes. Even a YouTube call? video, you probably might not oh, be able no, to download it. No. Yeah. I think twenty-five dollars yeah. is like fifty megabits. Yeah. That's too tiny. You know, that's too tiny. Yeah. So it's only a Gambian would do that. Yeah. You know, and again, um, I understand. You know, people would say, yeah, the after sales, the gam sales, and the others, they invest a lot of money into. Mm. Th that is all true. It's all true. You know, I mean, I, I don't you're not knocking on, on them. All of that, you're you know? not knocking on them at yeah. all. Yeah. But um, I think as a country, mm. as as youth of this country, mm. you know, the the, the, f the future is ours. You know, we have two options. We can sit today and complain about it, mm. you know, that people are not doing what they're supposed to do. Or we can take the fight to their door. And then, you know, you invest into internet. Somebody invests into healthcare. Okay. Somebody in, mm. That's how we're going to make Gambia better. Mm -hmm. You know, if people can have quality service somewhere, they come to you. But Gambian youths, you know, do, who are going to be there for the next 50 to 60 years, need to take charge of our country. Not only in politics. People are doing good things in politics, man. There's so many youths that are in, getting involved in politics. Mm. But how about the other side? Entrepreneurship. Mm. It's lacking. You know, you go to Gambia, it's Nigerians that are doing some of these, you know, entrepreneurship and stuff there. Nigerians, the Lebanese, and, you know, you know what I'm saying? And it's, this is not a secret to anybody. You mean trade? You know? Exactly. Mm. So we need to go home and take charge of a country. Let's not only take the easy route. When I mean the easy route is, well, I'm sitting in America, man. Yeah. There's internet here, there's yeah. everything here. Every December, I can go to Gambia at least for one month, maybe two weeks, and then come back. Mm. Complain about everything and then come back. To me, that is not the solution. No. You know, we have skill sets here. You know, we need to sacrifice, you know, try to do something there. Whatever you know how to do, mm -hmm. you learn to become a doctor, a nurse, or whatever, go and then serve the community. Yeah. I was, I was watching a documentary in Ghana there is this doctor who is a uh, U.S. medically qualified doctor. He was working in, 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 in the U.S. And then he went to vacation in Ghana. Mm -hmm. And then he took his mom, his mom or some, someone very close to him, to the hospital. Mm -hmm. 
and then he couldn't believe it. The service, the service was so poor. He could not get any information that he needed about the patient. There is no records. There no nothing. And then he decided to invest. Now he's doing a mobile, you know, mobile, mobile. He's a mobile doctor. Like he have a um, a, a car that would drive him oh, to his patients, yeah. and he has everything. Go and yeah. check on them. Innovation in, in Ghana, Niger. It's in Nigeria. In Ghana. Yeah, Ghana, in Ghana. So he visit his his patients. Wow. You know, take the hospital to them. Go to Gambia. That's amazing. You know, we are all complain that the healthcare system is bad. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. bad. But you, if you are a Gambian, mm -hmm. you invest into healthcare. You're not gonna make people's life hell. Mm. You're not gonna go buy a medicine for two dollars. You're gonna sell sell it for ten dollars in Gambia. So I think you know these are the kind of things that would make Gambia better. We can become the envy of the you know other nations. Other nations. So you you are hundred percent bootstrap, right? Say again. Like you are. It's it's a self invest. You're not you're not partnering with anybody right right now nice. I sold proprietorship yeah. and number two I don't borrow a dime from anybody that's what I'm talking about because a lot of people you know <laughs> in Africa in general a lot of people you see uh, some uh, a lot of businesses and their faces are mm -hmm. probably the, the the native of that country mm -hmm. but that person whose name is the his face is the um, or he is the is the uh, uh, whose face is in the business mm -hmm. is not the owner it's not the true owner there is a lot yeah, somebody of people, else yeah. somebody see investors people behind, investors yeah. behind yeah, true, true. because that. they do that you know yeah. to you know be able to you know yeah. um, i refuse cut, to have, have um, tax cuts and stuff i refuse to have yeah. any that's any good loans, that's good any loans or any um because i think like in order to steer the business at the direction that i want yeah. you know i need quick quick decisions so i don't want to i don't want to be fighting over you know which direction to take with somebody and mm. that's why I, I want to go into solar people offer to invest into this and i tell them no at this point it's, uh, yeah it's, for it's now too, i think you know yeah right yeah. right now you know mm. i can afford to at least you know sponsor the business to a level to a to grow at a level that i want i don't mm -hmm. want to go and then start with you know 10,000 customers i think that is, that is not how things yeah. go yeah. you know if this plan you, you plan it a tree today and tomorrow it blew up you're mm. gonna be like whoa i didn't expect this yeah you but, not be able to manage yeah but later on you definitely if you want to expand you definitely yeah, need yeah, to absolutely. invite investors you know good people absolutely. that you know hopefully around. not you know mm. i feel like um yeah. whatever we have we will Gambians, be able to I mean, yeah invest our money investors. into the business again mm -hmm. and grow the business but again like it's a win-win situation for people you know um we are local business we are you know gambian owned that is trying to solve you know mm. a very very big gap in the gambia i mean people could not believe and um, i've been realistic right now we haven't even advertised the business a day where we you know on our inner wi-fi zones we are connecting more than 150 people so how many wi-fi zones do you have so right now we have one we initially we wanted to do five okay so we have one in sukuta 600 square meters there'll be one in busubi 600 square meters and then like you see so mm. we're going to replicate this around town all over at least all Damn. these major cities absolutely if you if you don't want to buy um a 50 megabits or megabyte they call it in gambia for 25 or 26 dollars and then you use it for only six minutes or you go to bed before you wake up your credit disappear mm -hmm. go and buy a wi-fi zone if you have something to solve go right now in fact the surprising thing is my brother is going to gambia university this is actually benefiting him because it's right in my home so he told me now he can connect and then do his studies and then do research and do all the things i'm like oh wow okay that is something new you know because wow. initially when we all say internet we all think about whatsapp calls and, that calls? And that yeah, and yeah. but he's actually using it you know because he told me they used to send them credit from the university but now mm. he can connect to this for 25 dollars do your research i mean you in know? gambia if we have a good internet service people mm -hmm. don't need to try, you know because now as 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 now i think what, uh, what COVID uh brought to us <laughs> like people are using virtual a lot you know, a Correct, lot of yeah, schools yeah, yeah. a lot of schools are going virtual mm -hmm. you know you don't need to go physically to a university mm -hmm. you know to have your degree you can absolutely, basically absolutely, unless absolutely. unless if it is something you know yeah. that's hands-on you have to be in the lab to do you know all the technical stuff you know. absolutely. Well, other than that all these other <laughs> you can no, do it actually in, do it online in, in and get your degree. i think internet is the greatest yeah. equalizer yeah <laughs> you know because the reason why i say that myself i'm a product of the internet yeah you know sure. when i first came to the united states i could not go to school i could not finish school mm. but most of the things i learned when people go to youtube and watch movies and other things mm. i go to youtube and learn things learn things you know yeah. i learn technology mm. do a lot of research before i even graduate i have a decent it job mm. if i graduate from an associate degree 
you know after two years into my in my work after three years into my work i lead people <laughs> with a bachelor's degree i don't even have a degree yet seriously yeah. i don't have a degree yet and my current job when i when i apply for the job the requirement was a degree you know i had an associate degree but when i did an interview they told me you know what dude this job is for you we know you're the, you're the right person but you know it requires a degree i'm like well i don't have a degree they told me no we know that but we're gonna waive it for you I'm like, oh, okay. You know, <laughs> you know, this tech industry is yeah. all about experience. Exactly. It's you know? all about experience. You yep. know, you and know, I, I mean? um, degree is important. It is. Yeah. But, you know, if you have experience and you don't Absolutely. have Absolutely. a degree, you have they go together, but higher chance yeah. than somebody who is yeah. freshly from school. Hands on and, you know, yeah. th that place more, it has more weight than right. degree. Absolutely. You know, so I think internet is a great, is the greatest equalizer ever. People can use it to advantage. My, my order... You know, my other intention for this Wi-Fi zones is, you know, messiness, carpenters, you know, whoever is doing whatever you're doing, mm -hmm. go there and research, go to YouTube and see how other people are doing this. Mm -hmm. Try you learn, mm -hmm. you know, you can you can improve your life. You know, I think mm -hmm. this is that's what internet is gonna bring. And the other thing is, and I've said this in one of our episodes, is that we all complain that, you know, well, Gambia there is no jobs. When all these kids come out of school, where are they gonna go? Well, the internet. I work with people from the Philippines. They're sitting in the mm -hmm. Philippines, mm -hmm. you know, all over the world, India. So let's let's empower our youths, give them good quality internet, and they will be able to have a job. Mm. They become global instead of just Gambia. You know, they could be working for a company in Senegal, a company in Nigeria, a company somewhere, a company in the US. You know, that's how nations develop. We don't say, well, all these kids are going to school. What what job? Are we don't even know what how to do it. Just it's, it's the internet. It's the internet. Yeah, you know, the internet. give them skills, computer science skills. Yeah. You know, networking genius and other mm -hmm. people. They mm -hmm. need it all over the world. Yeah. Get bizarre to fly in and then, you know, hire 120, 200, mm. <laughs> you know, youths. Because it's cheap level for them. Exactly. Mm. And that cheap level for them is a quality, you know, for um, us. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Surely. You know, so I think um, this is the mindset that the younger generation mm -hmm. need to have in order to take Gambia to the next level. To compete with the rest of the countries absolutely you know but you know um the mindset right now or the the belief system right now need to change and i want to say you this know. you know i want um people watching it they should they should let their kids watch these kind of things you know what i mean because look at Sewer man he's doing great he's doing this as young as he is is working for him so if your kid is younger even Mm -hmm. you know watching these kind of things it's That's gonna right. motivate him it's gonna make him understand that you know you know even if i can make it out here you know there's somewhere i can make absolutely you know i can go to gambia yeah. and yeah. establish something yeah. i can pursue yeah. whatever i want to pursue absolutely. and then go to gambia and do it over there and you know and you know s sometimes you know we always you know teach our kids mm -hmm. how to get out of the hood but we should teach them how to make that hood yeah, yeah. you know what i mean the hood they're from because that's what's going to bring changes we cannot just you know make them and get get them out of the hood but you know at least do something for the hood you know yeah. in, in Gam you know i mean that's that's, it's necessary that's for, an amazing yeah. point because mm -hmm. if you look at gambia especially me I, I used i was telling this to my little brother when i was coming out of high school mm. the only thing i was thinking about how do I get a visa to go anywhere in the world? Right. I just don't want to be in the Gambia. And I don't even know why, why, why I was thinking that. I don't know. You know, but what is the Gambian dream? When you say American no. dream, you go no. to school, you go to school, you graduate, you have education, you're guaranteed to have a decent job here mm -hmm. for the most part. You know, depending on what you go to school for, but for the most part, you should have a decent job here. Mm -hmm. You know, so the future of people here are guaranteed. But a lot of Gambians don't, even me, I don't believe if I go to Gambia, go to school in Gambia, go to university, graduate in Gambia, I can make it in Gambia. A lot of kids don't even have the belief, mm -hmm. you know, so that alone is discouraging people to even, you know, strive in school. So I think, what is the Gambian dream? There has to be real examples of people that actually grew up in the Gambia, mm -hmm. make it in the Gambia. They don't even want to go to sit in America. Yeah, I know yeah. they're there, mm -hmm. but I don't think they're obvious enough. You know, like you go to Senegal, the Yusin Dus and the other people, you know, that's, you can count them. You know, people who, they don't want to go live in France. They don't want to go live anywhere. They want to mm -hmm. live in Senegal. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm a product of Senegal. And I know recently I've seen a lot of youths that are coming up with ideas like that. You know, but that's again, lot, that's too much talent to in Gambia. Too much skills and talent yeah. in Gambia. Yeah, you it's know? just you know? you know, we like the support. We like the, mm. you know, I think that's just 
Africa in general. You know, I, I think of, if I want to define Gambian dream at the time mm-hmm. when I was coming, I don't right now. I don't know, you know, because I still even start to think why people even go through back way because it's not my generation. Right. I have no clue why. Why would somebody? You know, go through back way and other things. I I don't know unless yeah. somebody who went through the experience and tell me what was the reason when you were in Gambia you went to back way. But when I was coming from high school, you know, my the Gambian dream was go to school until grade twelve. After grade twelve, within six seven one year, you go to the Americas, the America, the yeah. mm. and then within two three years you come back home for holidays, and then go back again, mm-hmm. go back again, start building something, start building. This is the dream. Yeah, that, yeah This yeah. is what we found for the last thirty years. A lot of people are doing. Absolutely. I think that trajectory need to change. They need to change because you know, my dad mm-hmm. keep telling me he never understood why we. I come to U U S and study, and I don't want to go back home. He thought I was gonna go. I'm like, mm-hmm. whoa, I'm not coming back. But before that was happening mm-hmm. in the first yeah, before, Republic, yeah, 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 people yeah. go to studies in abroad. They come back home. I mean, watching TRRC, I've seen a lot of people, a lot of exactly. our elders who you know came here, went yeah. to the UK, the you same know, thing. My dad studied and went back. The same mindset. You so know? he never understand that, mm-hmm. you know, but. This last twenty years has changed. That people mm-hmm. come and stay. Yeah, you know, um, I think that caused a lot of brain drain for Gambia. Mm. And as a youth of the country, we all have to think how can how can we can reverse and that. And we have amazing people out here. May amazing Gambians who are doing yeah, we, amazing things. You have Gambians here Smart. running half of Microsoft, eh. running well, that's what Amazon I'm and the other places. That's what I'm saying. You know, so I think we all have to think about this Man. because if not, what is going to happen? We all gonna continue to go home, and then find out that nothing is working. Mm. We complain. We expect somebody is gonna fix it, but who? Who is gonna fix it? Yeah. There's no yeah. drainage system in Gambia. <laughs> who? Who are the engineers to think on how to design the next drainage? You know, that's Bob. <laughs> Bob got actually wanted. I don't know if I can say this, but yeah, that's his, that's in the pipeline though. That's one of his plans. He wanna Absolutely. he wanna start a uh, like a competition. Like these Gambian engineers or Gambian young Gambians in Gambia, yeah. you know, um, to design a drain, drainage system, mm-hmm. you know, in Serekunda or anywhere in Gambia, like a, particularly in Serekunda because it's more pop- populated or Banjul. And then if you win, you know, yeah, there's going, there's going to be something for you. So you, yeah, you, it's, you, it's, I think you, that's necessary. Yeah. It's good to encourage as, people. As, as a youth of the country, mm-hmm. the, the, when I go to Gambia, these are the things that I'm like. Man, it would take 50, 60, 70 years yeah. if all of these are going to come into click together and become a fully functioning system. Oh, yeah. You know, why is, tell me if, if you see, actually see a real market in Gambia. Mm. I don't see it. You know, road constructions are crazy. They're terrible. Yeah. They're a dead trap. You know what I'm saying? So, so many things, the hospital system, yeah. the education system, you can it's name a list. Mm-hmm. Let's, let's even revise, let me not even let, just you name one, one functioning system in the Gambia. Fully functioning. We all say, well, Gambia nothing works, but this works. Let me think. It's not there. It's not no, there. I can't think of exactly. <laughs> Go to Nawik. <laughs> the Gamtels. It's worse. You know, in an assistance. You know, Gamtel used to be the best. Gamtel used to be heard. the in, best in West Africa. That's what I heard. Second best in Africa. You know? You see? But yeah. today? I, I don't know. I'm not yeah. saying that, but, but again, are they functioning at their capacity? Mm. At their best? No. There's no single institution in the government. To me, that's what I see. You know, the police system. You know, military? I don't know. So, I think this is why every youth what kind of Gambia do you want 20 years from now? Absolutely. Do that we want a chaos, mm. robbery and other things? Mm. Or do we want a nation that people can, you know, come out of and say, you know what, I have a future here. Mm. Look at India. Indians are, you know, leaving Microsoft and going home, mm. leaving Amazon and going home. Yeah, home. It's a big mm. trend now. Indians are going home. They want to develop their country. The Chinese have done it. You know, it might not be the way people want it, but hey, man, the citizens are going to benefit out of it. Yeah, yeah. If any country can develop faster, can be. The population is too small. Yeah, the population is there. The land but size. <clears throat> change is not easy. Change is not when, easy. When you, when you say some of these things, people are going to say, you are too ambitious. You know, well... <laughs> I, I, you got to be ambitious. <clears throat> you got to be over ambi- it, ambitious. Exactly, but... You know, you coming to Ngafanya, Ngafanya, you know, Tamumu is a, is a blessing that... Mm-hmm. You know, if you go somewhere that is better than where you're from, okay. you know, um, 
you should open your it's just open your mind mm-hmm. and your Take eyes so whatever back. you oh. see out there you definitely because mm-hmm. it'll be like kind of like a tembial so like you be like you want to take that thing there. So when we are talking passionately, it's not about, okay, we want to make a Gambia America now. Nah. No, but we no. want what America one day. You know, inshallah. Yeah, not start with it. Yeah. Honestly, I, I was telling this to my friend. Future. I, I think um, some of the things that we are talking about, mm-hmm. it might not be for our generation. Uh, no, 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 no. But if you look I'll at America, you know, even though people depend on you know your side of the history and how you want to define it, but the people who built this country, mm-hmm. they are not here. Who are the people benefiting from this? It's me and you. It's me, exactly. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But so it's important. You know, the, mm-hmm. the forefathers, they strive to maintain mm-hmm. this country in a way and build this country in a way that's going to benefit the future generation. Exactly. You know, what, you I, know. what I always say, like, every individual, me and you, when we have our kids, mm-hmm. we want a better life for our kids. Sure. We do everything to make so our kids have there, a future. There you go. There you, you know, go. You know there what I mean? Go. So as a country, collectively, that's how we should think. We should think about our future, and our future are our kids, your kids, my kids, Absolutely. whatever. So whatever Absolutely. I can do yeah. to make the future better for our kids, you know, I'm gonna do that. So we don't have to, huh? Abanda, almost okay. So yeah, that's what it is. So <laughs> man, time to master. So nyingai man, like that's that's what it is. So we have to we have to work for our future. We have to do things, you know, for the future, not only for my family, but whatever is gonna make this future better for for my country for my for my community you know that, i think that's what it, we, you know we should think about and we i mean we should do away with this um feuds you know and political <laughs> schemes you know i know and uh, the, the fighting the, the the you know internet trolling the you know it's not necessary you know what i mean mm-hmm. uh, you know for politics is important we need politicians mm-hmm. you know and we need to take our politicians we need to you know make them accountable for whatever they do mm-hmm. you know i mean it's important but you know when we are doing it construct so yeah you know if it is working for you it's going to work for everybody you know mm-hmm. i think this this is what we need to be doing we need to you know let our kids like i said in, uh, earlier on mm-hmm. we should let our kids watch these kind of things yeah, yeah, you know yeah. it's it's really educative you are absolutely a trail blazer man yeah, thank you, you know you're doing that, amazing man. things thank you appreciate you know keep doing what you're doing you know i'm inspired i'm very inspired yeah, right now you, and i know you. a lot of people out there are going to be inspired you know yeah, thank so you, if man. you have <laughs> This kind of thing, anything that you have in mind, if it is something that's going to be good for our generation, mm-hmm. you know, or our future, get up and do it. Absolutely. You know, you know like if, I say, yeah. anything you're doing, yeah. you know, you, you genuinely want to change Absolutely. The, the lives of other people on the other side. Yeah. You yeah. know what I'm saying? It's easy to succeed, yeah. but it's difficult for the entire generation to succeed. To succeed, yeah. You know, we always have to account for other people. Other people, it's, we have to be collective. Success is not only about you. Yeah, it's not about if it. If you're successful, your people are not. You're not. Us. You're Most not, of us, when you go to not. Gambia, sometimes it's embarrassing. Yeah, you always feel like, man, you know, how, why can't yeah. things be like this? Yeah, how they are in other places. And yeah. not that we change our cultures and other things, but there's so many things. There's so many you things. Know, that, Gambia yeah. at this stage, I will tell you, is unplanned. You know, mm. I don't even know what the future holds for the people. But again, that's why the youth, the younger generation, need to have a dialogue. <laughs> need yeah. to engage it. Oh, yeah. Because mm-hmm. at the end of the day, you know. Most of the people that are going to be here in the next 50 years mm. are the youths. You know, so if people are up there, that their time is not that much, yeah. but they want to decide the future of the country, we should have a say in that. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Because what you guys are doing today is going to impact tomorrow. You know, that is important. Otherwise, you're going to leave people with a mess. You know, I know politics is there. People are passionate about it. Good for them. But we have to be realistic and then see, you know, what direction this country want to go. Mm-hmm. And then have a genuine conversation about that. Include the youths. Yeah, I mean, I, I, another thing people you fail know. to understand is with all whatever differences we have, yeah. there's one thing that is an ultimate cause for everyone. That is, mm-hmm. we have a nation to build. Exactly. <laughs> like, uh, Seiko, Seiko coming out with shout out to you, bro. Yeah. He always said this. We have a, something to build. It's not going to so be how built by keyboards. Exactly. How you know, are we keyboard development. Be, yeah. It did not work for a lot of places. No, 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 no. In fact, it caused a lot of violence and yeah. pro- pro- unnecessary you know, information. And I, I know it's okay to talk. Yeah. If you have the time to talk mm-hmm. or to engage politics, I mean, talk. It, it's okay. Mm. You know, because it's a democratic country and mm. then. You know, one of the you know pillars of democracy is freedom of speech. But freedom of speech is, is it should be with actions. <laughs> you know, we have to build 
that nation. Mm. And keyboards are not going to build it. No, no, no. You know, fighting over social media is not going to build it. In fact, it's going to waste valuable time. Mm. You know, a genuine discussion. We have an NDA, a National Development Plan. Plan, yeah. You know, how many Gambians even understand what not, even me, I don't know, yeah. I don't know what the heck it is. So oh, I think man. all of this civic so, education, yeah. you know, there has to be a genuineness to propel this country forward. You know, otherwise we're gonna be stagnant. Yeah, we're gonna and I be think that is stagnant. what's happening right now. It's gonna be like you a, know, a anyone who drives. Water, that's not water. <laughs> it doesn't matter the driver. Yeah. Anyone who drives, you're gonna have problems. problems. And I think as a country, mm. we need to learn to allow the driver to drive. If we know you can drive to your destination, and yeah. you know what, let somebody else. Let drive. somebody else drive. Yeah, exactly. And that include yeah. people in the vehicle because mm -hmm. you cannot be in a vehicle you know the driver doesn't know how to drive but you know because the driver is giving you some deuce and you're like you know what he's okay you know but your life is at stake yeah, i think we have to be realistic yeah, you know to, to change the trajectory of that and say we're going to continue this man yeah. like the time is not favorable right now but I like know, i man. said you know <laughs> peer talk, this is what we do we are action people Absolutely. you know we talk about it and we do it you know we, i encourage everybody every young gambian to talk and do you know um our people are secret you are doing amazing thing yeah, we, thank you you, know, you, you it. did it you've been saying it and now you did it but is a farm right now he's yeah like i was saying it's a it's, it's it's a good thing, you know, you know, everybody's doing, you know, something. Babuka, Babuka too is out there, you know, he's a farmer, you know, he's doing his thing. Shout out to you, shout out to Sade, the queen. Yeah, you guys are doing great. And, uh, you know, Bekai, Bekai too, you know, Bekai this Ramadan, you know, he had, he had a, um, uh, a bakery that, you know, he make bread and then make it, you know, affordable for the community. Which is a good thing, commendable, you know. Um, back to doing his thing. So, Pietro, that's what this is what we do, you know. And we encourage everybody out there, you know. You know, let's talk about it and do it. It's Gambia that we have. You know what I mean? Gambia. When we do this kind of things, you know, we're gonna make life easy for the for Gambians, cause we're from Gambia, and everything we make is gonna stay in Gambia. You know, that's the, that's the good side of it. You know, that's one of the good sides of it too. So, um. Everybody's complaining things are um, expensive in Gambia. It's because a lot of businesses are not controlled by Gambians. So if our businesses are controlled by us, us, us then you know our people are gonna benefit from it, man. So yeah, man, I will tell you share this video and let's keep the conversation going. All right, see you.